Hello, Guardians. Cryptanalysis is an important concept to learn for CISSP, CCSP, CISM, CISA, and other certifications. A good understanding of cryptanalysis is vital for designing secure systems, implementing encryption solutions, and assessing the security of cryptographic controls. The term cryptanalysis refers to the process of analyzing and deciphering cryptographic systems with the aim of uncovering their concealed elements. Even in situations where the cryptographic key or secret is not known, cryptanalysis is employed as a means to circumvent cryptographic safeguards and gain access to the content of encrypted messages. In essence, cryptanalysis involves studying cryptographic algorithms, protocols, and systems to identify weaknesses or vulnerabilities that can be exploited to decrypt or compromise the security of encrypted data. Cryptographic attacks and cryptanalytic attacks are the two main categories within the field of cryptanalysis. These categories represent different approaches to analyzing and compromising cryptographic systems. Cryptographic attack. These encompass a broad range of attacks that aim to exploit vulnerabilities or weaknesses in cryptographic systems. Cryptographic attacks may target the implementation of algorithms, protocols, or applications to find weaknesses that can be exploited. Following are the types of cryptographic attack. Man-in-the-middle attacks. Man-in-the-middle attacks involve the attacker inserting themselves into a conversation, allowing them to eavesdrop on and potentially modify or decipher the communication. Replay attacks. Replay attacks are a subset of man-in-the-middle attacks. The attacker intercepts data, such as a user's hashed password sent for authentication. While they may not decipher the data, they can replay it later for unauthorized access. Temporary file attacks. Temporary files often store plaintext, ciphertext, and encryption keys during data encryption and decryption. These files may lack sufficient security, enabling attackers to access sensitive information through temporary file attacks. Implementation attacks. Implementation attacks target weaknesses in how algorithms, crypto systems, protocols, or applications are implemented. A notable example is the Wired Equivalent Privacy, UEP protocol, which poorly implements the RC4 encryption algorithm, making it insecure. Side channel attacks. Side channel attacks gather sensitive information by closely monitoring a system engaged in cryptographic tasks. These include power side channel attacks, timing attacks, and radiation emission attacks. Dictionary attacks. Dictionary attacks are a form of brute force attack, prioritizing the most likely combinations over sequential attempts. Attackers often begin with common passwords like password or ABCD at 123 rainbow tables. Rainbow tables extend password dictionaries by storing hash values instead of plain text passwords. Attackers pre-compute hash values for common passwords, creating a database for quick comparison. Birthday attacks. Birthday attacks exploit probability theory's birthday paradox to find collisions in hashing algorithms, social engineering. Lastly, the most effective way to compromise a crypto system often involves targeting the system's weakest link, people. This may include bribing individuals, the purchase key attack, or employing force or intimidation, rubber hose cryptanalysis. Cryptanalytic attacks. Cryptanalytic attacks, on the other hand, specifically focus on deducing or discovering the cryptographic key used in an encryption or decryption process. The goal is to break the encryption by uncovering the key, thereby gaining access to the plaintext from ciphertext. Cryptanalytic attacks include methods like brute force attacks, chosen plaintext attacks, and known plaintext attacks. Cryptanalytic attacks include brute force attacks. A brute force attack represents the most straightforward hacking method, trying every possible key until the correct one is found. Although simple, it proves entirely ineffective against encryption algorithms employing longer keys. It's crucial to consider the key space, the total number of potential keys, which doubles with each additional bit in the key length. Consequently, the key space increases exponentially, presenting a formidable challenge. For algorithms relying on 128-bit or especially 256-bit keys, there's currently no known system or technology capable of brute-forcing keys of that length. Ciphertext-only attacks. 
In these scenarios, the attacker only has access to the ciphertext and must deduce the key from it. Ciphertext. Only attacks are highly challenging. Known plaintext attacks. Known plaintext attacks occur when the attacker possesses both the ciphertext and the corresponding plaintext. Given this scenario, the attacker aims to deduce the encryption key. Once the key is deciphered, they can decrypt other messages and potentially forge messages. Chosen plaintext attacks. The following attack types incorporate the word chosen. In chosen plaintext attacks, the attacker has access to the encryption and decryption process. They select the plaintext to input into the process and then analyze the resulting ciphertext to deduce the key. Chosen ciphertext attacks. Chosen ciphertext attacks operate similarly, but in reverse. The attacker selects the ciphertext to input into the process and then studies the resulting plaintext to deduce the key. Factoring attacks. Factoring attacks pertain primarily to a single asymmetric algorithm, RSA. When factoring attacks are mentioned, think of RSA or think of factoring as an attack vector against RSA.